Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel of Beyond Consultancy, where we discuss all things operations excellence. My name is Herman Lemmens. In this keynote, we will explain the economic order quantity. This keynote is the first of a series. In a second keynote, we will show how to apply the economic order quantity. In the remaining keynotes, we will discuss other order size optimization models. The economic order quantity model determines the optimal order size at which the total cost associated with the purchase, the ordering and the storage of a product is minimal. In case the purchase price is constant, the model can be simplified to the minimizing of the sum of only the ordering and the inventory costs. The model was developed by Ford W. Harris in 1913. For manufacturing companies, the economic order quantity determines the optimal order size of the materials, the parts or the subassemblies, depending on the company's position in the added value chain. It is not related to the size of the sales orders. This can be represented in the following value stream map. The planning department of a manufacturing company orders the materials with the suppliers. These materials are then received and stored in the materials warehouse. Smaller order lot sizes will lead to more orders and thus more work in ordering and receiving, while larger lot sizes will lead to larger storage space requirements. The question is to find the right balance. For merchandising companies, the economic order quantity is the optimal order size of the goods bought. Neither here is it related to their sales orders. The planning department of a merchandising company orders the goods with the suppliers. The goods are received and stored in the goods warehouse. Also here, the question is to find the right balance between the ordering and the inventory costs. Let's investigate some of the key operational details. The economic order quantity model assumes that each new order is delivered in full and in one single batch. Furthermore, the order arrives just in time before the inventory is depleted. This assumes a known and stable order lead time. Next, the optimal order size Q is kept constant for a certain period of time. This period may be a quarter, half year or a year, depending on specific supply chain considerations. The ordering strategy of the economic order quantity model belongs to the class of fixed order quantities. In a parallel keynote, we will discuss other classes of ordering strategies. In order to formulate the inventory costs, we need to determine the average inventory size. If the demand takeout rate is constant and the order size is assumed to be equal to Q, then the average inventory size becomes Q divided by 2. This can be illustrated by considering a right angle triangle with an average height of H divided by 2. The inventory costs per unit, which is denoted by capital H, are related to the cost of ownership or rental of the warehouse, the cost of manpower, equipment and utilities to operate the warehouse, and lastly the insurance, obsolescence and the financing costs. The inventory costs are sometimes called the holding costs. At times they are expressed as a percentage over the unit purchase price, for instance 20%. The total inventory costs for the period are directly proportional to the average inventory size, which, as we have seen on the previous page, is equal to half the order quantity Q. So we come to this formula for the total inventory costs for the period. The costs of an order, which is denoted by capital S, are related to the office work to prepare, release, monitor and to receive an order, the physical transport and reception of the goods, and thirdly, some suppliers may raise extra charges for specific change of costs incurred by the order. The ordering costs are fixed costs. They are independent of the order size. These costs are sometimes referred to as the setup costs. The total ordering costs for the period are directly proportional to the number of orders placed, which is equal to the total demand D divided by the order size Q. So we come to this formula for the total ordering costs for the period. We now put the previous cost terms together and come to the total cost formula. Note that we have added the EOQ subscript 
to differentiate this formula from other order optimization formulas, which we'll discuss in later keynotes. Let's start solving this one. The solution method is to take the first derivative of the function, equal this to zero, and solve for q. What does this mean? The first derivative of a function can be seen as its gradient function, or its rate of change function. When we approach the optimal point, the original function will start leveling off, and its gradient will become zero. To find the derivative, we apply the so-called power rule. In the first term, the derivative of q is 1. In the second term, the 1 over q can be thought of as q to the power of minus 1. Its derivative is minus q to the power of minus 2. We now equal this function to 0 and bring the negative term to the other side of the equal sign. We will now multiply both terms with q, which results in the following equation. We recognize these terms from the total cost function. In fact, this equation states that in the optimal point, the inventory costs equal the ordering cost. We will remember this for future analysis. Let us now multiply both terms again with q. Move h and 2 to the other side of the equal sign. When taking the square root, we at last arrive at the formula for the economic order quantity. We can also show the analysis graphically. The total cost function is depicted by the red curve. It is the sum of the two other curves. The yellow line depicts the total inventory costs. Note that larger order quantities cause higher inventories. The orange line depicts the total ordering costs. Smaller order quantities cause more orders and hence increase the total ordering costs. The minimum of the red curve determines the economic order quantity. The graph also shows that at the minimum point, the inventory and the ordering costs are indeed equal. Let's at this point summarize the uh, EOQ assumptions. The purchasing price is assumed to remain constant. There are no cash nor quantity discounts involved. Each order is delivered in full and in one single batch. The order arrives just in time before the inventory is depleted, which implies that the order lead time is known and stable. The optimal order size is kept constant for a certain period of time. Throughout this period, the inventory and the ordering cost also remain constant. Lastly, the total demand for the period is known and the rate of takeout is constant as well. In case some of these assumptions cannot be met, different optimization models are available. If, for instance, we have incremental deliveries instead of in one single batch, then the economic production quantity model determines the optimal order size. If we have price discounts with certain order sizes, then the quantity discount model is advised. We will discuss these order size optimization models in other keynotes. Wrapping up, let us review some points which should be taken into consideration when implementing the economic order quantity. It is advised to initially determine the optimal order size on an item-by-item -item basis. Do not commence with calculating average order sizes for a group of items. It may lead to very wrong numbers. Practically speaking, the economic order quantity should be seen as a benchmark. Indeed, there may be limitations with, for instance, the packaging quantities. In these situations, the EOQ informs us how close we are to the optimal solution. Beware also that the uh, economic order quantity may impact the utilization of the logistics capacities. For instance, if the model suggests larger lot sizes, it may impact the total storage space required. On the other hand, if the model goes for smaller orders, they may need more handling capacity. Implementing the economic order quantity is an intensive exercise. You may want to do an ABC analysis first after which you may decide which items to start with. For this, I would like to refer you to a parallel keynote video on the subject of the ABC. And with this, we have come to the close of this keynote. Thank you for being here. I hope you find it interesting. Please leave your views in the comment section below, and I hope to see you again.